Greetings, my brethren. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, Last Days of Europe, in which we're playing as a certain brotherhood, led by a guy named Wagner. Right now, we are currently winning our little battle, a little skirmish between us and Berezniki, or the Berezniki government, in which, honestly, they're attacking into mountains, they're using light infantry, and our soldiers aren't great, don't get me wrong, but, bruh. Let's be real. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. But the rush of bloody defeat will certainly teach our enemies a lesson about attacking the lands of the Brotherhood for years to come. Now on to cleansing up or cleaning up of the corpses. Oh, I love more rifles, stability, and political power. Very nice. Very nice. As much as I love using you, Wagner, you really are a field marshal, and we will use you as such. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, we have about 54 a political power. Not enough. Never enough. Never ever enough. Uh, and there goes the Americans. They're doing what they like to do. Vyadka. I just don't think it's worth it going against Vyadka. Bakurdistan? Bash Kurdistan. Wait, Kurdistan? Bash Kurdistan. Kurdistan. Bash Kurdistan. Or Bashkiria. Hmm. Do they have a connection? They probably do. Oh, I don't know if we should really attack these guys in here. We're not that strong. We'll see what happens. Oh, how much? Let's see. We're halfway done with our focus tree or focus for this focus. That's okay. National S. Yegor Roman Kolchak, huh? And Georgi Gudishin. Cool. Got a couple comments to go through as well, but we'll get to those in just a little bit after I look through a couple of this other stuff. Yeah, that, that hurts quite a bit. Construction speed minus 60%. Why do you pay me so much? We got a lot of manpower, which is great. I love it. But still. All right. We could do it. This would be very bad if we didn't win. I mean, these guys, look at that. They're looking... Oh. You have only... You, maybe. Maybe. We're, we're pretty similar, but attacking over the river is not a great idea. Oh, but we can risk it. How many divisions do they have? Uh, led by AVT. Man, if you have a question mark in your name, you got to be really something, don't you? you got 6,000 manpower, three, di three things. They have three to five divisions. Numerically, we beat them, so oh, this is a bad idea. It's a bad idea. But we're going to do it anyways. All right, after this, our industrial army, while it is noble to fight with meager technology, as the Germanic tribes did in ages long past, a race must eventually adopt mechanized warfare in order to survive. This does not mean abandoning one's honorable traditions, after all. The Germans conquered most of Europe and did so wedded firmly to their Aryan heritage. Luckily, we appear to be following in their footsteps. Our industrial recovery, aided by the labor of the lower castes, we pressed into service. It's progressing admirably. Of course, most of this production is military, as we need to prove ourselves in racial combat if we wish to survive. Munitions are obviously vital for frontline battle, but a sustainable offensive cannot be mounted without fuel. The task now is to decide which areas we want to focus our resources on. And we get Inspection Day. Very nice. Inspection Day was, in it was Inspection Day. Every worker scrambled to their positions in the factory work. On the double, lest the brothers catch them being late. As early as two hours before dawn, the machinery of the factory began working. The guards stared at them in contempt and gestured to them to move quicker. One brother took a laborer he hated aside and said, Tell your friends that if you don't do a good job, you will regret it. The inspector arrives. Sergei could tell by the thump of the boots. The only sound that rises above the roars of machines and engines. And the slow, steady bangs and squeaks in the, in the works tables. The inspector's shadow grew longer until it pierced the doorway. A man, somewhat short, emerged in the doorway. His entourage preceded him, covering the corners of the room in case of workers fleeing. Sergei supposed. No time for such thoughts, however, Sergei put his back to his work, screwing and polishing the rifles without pause. A bomber looming or loomed ahead far above. The scream of its alarms drove Sergei to his knees, and he shut his eyes. The anti-air guns fired, the sounds shaking the ground under his feet. Silence, and then an explosion. Kaboom! He could feel the shrapnel tearing through the buildings near him. He opened his eyes, and none of the workers had gone to their feet. Then the inspector stood in front of him. He felt his heart plunge, and he stared blankly at the inspector's boots. Looks like you still have a ways to go, he said. Untermensch. Before Sergei could even stammer out an apology, he felt the force of soles of those shoes in his face, loosening one of his teeth. Looks like we have to make one example out of the boys. Take him. Two brothers lifted him by his shoulders and carried him outside. Sergei quietly resigned himself to his fate. There is no escape, nor hope, only labor. Oh, we get guns. Oh, we get guns out of this. Nice. 69 political power, nice, not bad. God, I hope we do well here. Regardless, we're doing industrial investments. Hopefully, we can get a factory, a good factory. Bashkurdistan, Ooh, the longer we wait, these guys are going to get a little stronger, so... 
Hopefully they... Come on, come on. Come on. Actually, we don't need to see this one either. So, they refuse tribute. As expected, Bashkiria has sort of said they reject our offer and are ready for battle. We must be ready, or ready our men, to prepare for this fight. Alas, bloodshed is sometimes unavoidable, and we must prepare for what is to come. If they aren't going to cooperate, it is time we make or take the loot from Bashkiria by force. Now, we're taking over here. They have three to five divisions, which we're probably not going to do well, but hey, you know what? We tried it. Over here, research, trainer troops, political campaigns, a thousand more manpower would not be bad. We're doing really well manpower, though. Hmm... Daily pickle power. I don't want to really lose it. I mean, we don't have to spend anything. We could invest in infrastructure since we can't build anything anyways. We're doing okay. They have at least four divisions here. Uh, let's see what else. Political campaign. Come on, guys. Don't lose. Actually, who, we're led by Mr. Hatman. Gabriel Schwarzenbach. Which I tried to pronounce yesterday, and it was okay. Yeah, all that stuff is not really worth it. Come on, guys. You guys can win. Come on. Come on. It's for the brotherhood. Ooh. Has Burgundy finally done it? Well, things are gonna go kaboom! Couple comments. Someone recommends I play a CK or play in CK3 again. The game Crusader Kings 3. I want to. I will learn that game as time goes on a little bit more and more. I just I don't have a lot of time for it right now. I want to get back to it. I really do. Ooh, strategic theorem. Extensive planning, preparation to escape to excel in large scale warfare. I like the instruction. I really do. Focus on speed. Nah, I'm not really focused on speed. Offensive strategies. We don't really. Have Room for tanks, though. Combined operation sounds like a lot of fun. Attrition planning? I kind of like attrition planning, too. Organization. More artillery. Suppressive barrages. Ooh. This stuff down here, though. I mean, air support's nice and all, but we don't get helicopters. And I'm, I won't be able to research helicopters using this nation, either. So, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and go with strategic theorem, because we're going to plan. Large, large amount of planning. Come on, get that number going up, no matter how... Uh, yellow or red that little bubble is. So we're taking over a river into planes, which is not bad. Ooh, combat width is 52 versus 38. Our industrial army. Great. Hopefully we can win. For the love of God, I hope we can win. Uh, reopen the refineries, black gold, Aryan cavalry. Reopen the munitions plants, Aryan legions. Oh, let's see. Pressing issue. And this one, warlike nature. We are fighters, conquerors. Every single Aryan soldier will have a rifle and ability to do his racial duty, or reopen their refineries. Who? How about Aryan cavalry? <laughs> My Victoria ancestors. Oh, tidal wave. I don't think it really matters which one we do. I kind of like this one. The legions sound like fun. Let's go and reopen the munitions plants. Any empire is built on blood and iron. We are the blood. The racial purity of our ruling caste is impeccable. But for a long time, we have not held or had the iron. Permheim had munition plants once, churning out bullets and bombs for the Bolshevik vermin to tear down our morals and traditions. Although the Reich's defeat of the Soviets in the 1940s and their despicable residue ten years later opened the door for the creation of our state, it also destroyed much of Russia's industrial capacity as a result. The armies of the Aryan Brotherhood have suffered from shortages of necessary equipment. Now that our industry has been developed to a satisfactory level, we can fix this pressing issue. Though it will still be quite a pathetic imitation of the Wehrmacht that conquered Europe, our military will still have more than enough equipment to squash our enemies whenever, wherever we see them. Now, this might not be the right way for us to do just because, um, ooh, inspection day again. We do want to make sure that we have pretty much all the Slavs being selected instead of the Aryans, but this one doesn't seem like it really does much of anything there, so. Yeah, it expanded every century. Yeah, this doesn't really seem like it does too much. So, Brother Va Wagner, said a senior brother, dressed in an all-black uniform. Welcome to the training fields. In front of them stood several platoons of men, each dressed in the same outfit, standing at attention. As you can see, we prepared for your arrival. Examine the men before you to your heart's desire. They were the perfect Aryan specimen, standing proud in the dark, cold earth, points of Aryan light amid a Russian darkness. Their arms bore the armband that all brothers of the Br Brotherhood wore, a piece of red fabric with a white circle in the middle, which was a... Swastika. Thank you, Brother Dietrich. Wagner said, It's an honor to examine these fine examples of the Aryan blood within us. Dashing they were and tall with a ruddy reddish blue hue on their cheeks. Not one of them averted their eyes when they met Wagner's. Instead, in each was a burning fire with enthusiasm, its crackle audible to his ears. I see you have trained them very well. Tell me, D Dietrich. The old brother turned his head to face Wagner. Did your man eat well last night? Of course, sir. 
A slave assigned to this regiment were of highest quality. Dietrich snorted. Well, I might even say that they make for excellent cooks. Thank you for that, sir. As, and as well, he pointed to the rifles and machine guns of the men, the munitions and equipment. No need to thank me, brother. A workman must have the best tools to do his task, must he not? You and your regiment have proven yourselves worthy of the labor the slaves have put into your tools. Thank you, sir. And should we proceed? Lead the way, brother. Lead the way. 27 days left. That's quite a ways. We're still doing well here. And this guy is looking a little tired. Now, Bersk. Ooh, these guys are getting a little bit more strength up there. I don't like that. But that's alright. More manpower. Oh, we get 34 people a month. Not great. But we'll take it. Other comments. Okay, so... Someone asked, are we actually going to go with the Hyperborea route? We are in this campaign. I will play the Aryan Brotherhood again eventually. In which we will stick with Wagner. But someone really recommended I play as Hyperborea. So we will. In this campaign. And I promise I'll go back and play as Wagner. Someday. Not sure when, though. Uh, ooh, political campaign, no... Anything else here? Uh, research. Ah, right, successful. We actually were successful. Seize all that we can use. If you'd like to read this, go right ahead. And that picture is from the Soviet front in the 40s, I believe. That's old. That's very old. All right, thank you very much. Good job, guys. Very nice. The spoils of war. Victory. Our raiding parties drag home great bounties tied to the roofs of the military vehicles and lumped in sacks carried on horseback from enemy territories. With these treasures, we are able to fill our coffers, restock our armories, and increase production in our local industries. The balance of power is clearly shifted in our favor, and with each skirmish to come, we are better armed to tackle those challenges and encroach across the wild Russian frontiers. Nice. Let's go ahead. So what are we still limited here? Kill them all. More attack. I like that. Leader experience gain minus 80%. Oh my goodness. Total supervision? Uh, we probably don't mind going with military policing. That might be okay. Rules of engagement? Let's see. So we need poverty, which we can't do. Nascent industrial base. So we need industrial expertise immediately. Industrial expertise, which is workers. And then we'll do all this other stuff, because everything else is looking pretty much okay here. Well, except for poverty. So we're getting more literacy. Research facilities are okay. Agriculture isn't great, but, you know, it's okay. Industrial equipment is improving at two a month, which is nice. We can't do anything about poverty. And someone did say that, oh, army professionalism is going down as well. That really sucks. That uh, this is one of the worst starters or one of the worst unifiers in terms of, like, societal development. So it is what it is. And Aryan legions. If there's one unifying quality of the Aryan race, it is its warlike nature. We are fighters, conquerors, storming across the land and sacking the soft cities of decadent cultures for the past several years. Resource shortages shortages and the destruction of past wars have prevented us from realizing this racial ideal our soldiers have often experienced shortages of ammo and equipment at our lowest we have got have had guards on patrol with empty rifles now that our munition factories are pumping out shells and bullets at a steady rate we'll have shortages no longer every single Aryan soldier will have a rifle and the ability to do his racial duty without rationing ammunition this is a vital first step towards our goal of a modern army as well as towards our broader objective of an Aryan state ruling all of western russia very nice. Checking the brands. Brothers Dietrich and Willem stand side by side, examining the brands laid before them. Today, Wagner and the Council of the Brotherhood give, had given them a special assignment. The branding of slaves. In the hot fire pit in front of them, there were two brands. Both were red iron hot, burning as if by a strange desire to subsume. To make another submit to one's will. The new batch of slaves was coming. Rumors from the lower ranks as well as the lowly servants that made the bulk of the labor force in the barracks had stipulated that these bunch were especially pitiful. Short, thin, with a willowy complexion laid over them like a thin shroud of pay, pale gray fabric. Dietrich, an Aryan brother since the first days of the Brotherhood, pointed to one of the brands whose end was shaped like a swastika. Most of today's crew would probably use this one, he said, opening his palms against the crooked cross, hooked cross, to feel the warmth emanate. And the cruelty flow means they would make bad slaves. Better to put them out of their misery now, less people to manage, Brother Wagner would understand. And that one, said Willem? Noting the other brand, a cross, an X. Are those for the good slaves? Of course, Willem. Dietrich stood up and tapped Willem's shoulders. Do watch out for the ones you think would make a good brother. We can use more of those. How do you tell? Just pick whatever you like. Fifteen swastikas, eight cross, two ascended. Wow, look at that. We get anti-tank and artillery. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not bad. Look at that. Fill the coffers. Yes, please. If that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and stack up some good boys right here. We're going to get up to at least ten combat width. Well, we're going to get up to eight combat width, apparently. Nice. Eight combat width. Nice. We don't have enough army XP for now, but that's fine. Whatever. Now, guns. We're only 218. Italy wins Italy. Turkish War. Good job, Italy. Still making a few guns. Wow, minus 84. Kalk severely injured. But that's... We're just making ourselves more and more powerful right now. Political campaign, we said earlier. Nah. 
Train your workers, great. Oh, we still have, we still have a loot! One loot! Nice! Very good. Control investments, research, train our troops. Yeah. I keep looking back here for more inspiration, but there's not much inspiration down here. Rah. Minus 0.2. I don't really want to lower stability, but I would like more war support. That'll definitely help us out. Hmm. Aryan legions. When's the next research done? Oh, well, within around three ish weeks. That's not bad. How are you guys looking now that we've got some more guys on here? Oh, it's not looking great over there. So we have 166. How much would it take for us to put artillery, support artillery? We don't have the army XP for it. 24. Uh, that wouldn't be bad, actually. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. We have 317, so we could actually do that. Cool. And peace conference. Oh, someone has perished. Have they? Ah, uh, Guiana. Uh, City of Slaughter. Permheim was has been rejuvenated. The air of decay and degradation that once filled the streets has been filled with one of toil and martial vigor. The shift list. The subhuman majority has been put to work reestablishing our industry, and the weapons of war flow out of our factories in impressive numbers. Permheim is now an enigma of death, the nexus of the coming racial struggle against the scum, degenerates, and race traitors that occupy the vast majority of Russia. Besides the bare necessities required to keep our labors running, it produces, produces only what is needed for combat. Our blood is pure, our iron is mighty, and our hearts are full of righteous hatred. We have created the perfect staging ground for expansion across the region, and all that is left is to begin. Herr Inspector. The inspector gauged the ammunition plant, examining the vines that nod on its bricks and facade, and the noise of slaves toiling inside. This building has a had a history spanning into the Soviet era. He grimaced at the thought. What dark times? Before, before the enlightening and vision of the Brotherhood brought him forward as a best specimen of humankind. Recovering from his disgust, he smirked. The Soviets, their arch enemies, have provided the Brotherhood with the means to build the new order, a world where the lesser would learn their place in the hierarchy. An explosion rang from within, a muffled cacophony of a thousand cracklings steadily getting louder and louder before fading away to silence. A brotherhood stepped out. Hands over ears, he approached the distressed Aryan, questions bubbling in his mind. Perhaps this man can answer for him the most central of all them, or central of them all. To punish or let go. Hail! Uh, hail, Inspector, the man said. I am sorry for causing you concern, but I am fine. No problem, the Inspector said. What is your name, brother? Willem, sir. What happened back there, Willem? An accident? You could say that. Someone set off an old munitions cache. Six people are dead. Any of the Marion? Willem shook his head. Good. Continue as you would, brother. He saluted the brother, who returned the gesture. He would let these lot go after all. Slaves come and go in such numbers these days. His mind turned to the report he was about to write later in the day. Minor accident. Six slaves dead. Not, not a big deal. The inspector has better things to do. Wow. You can even... Cool. I love guns. Oh, here we go. Secure control. You know what? We're going to do this one. And we're barely going to get any war support. Hopefully that'll be okay. Can we purchase more equipment yet? Uh, they do not have enough equipment and stockpile. Okay then, well, goodbye then. Ooh, look at you. I do, I think I should probably train our divisions. Uh, but that does cost, uh, we have enough infantry, infantry equipment. Go ahead. Now at this point... You want to ask yourself, Omar has become the Sultan of Sionan. Well, good luck, Omar. Have a good day. Um, Bulgaria sides with Italy. Okay, then. So, these guys have 35 soft attack and 15 breakthrough. These guys have 32 soft attack and 44 breakthrough, 156 defense. Well, these guys, 112. And they have 125 HP. Well, they have 100. 60 organization versus 60 organization. And let's take one more stat out here that I would like to see. Piercing is four, air attacks, air attack is five. Eh. Wait. Actually, these guys are heavier. Right? Two and a half. Well, technically they're only heavier just because they're not other stuff. But whatever. Uh, let's see. Let's come down here. And vacuum tube computing. Even faster research speed. Now, of course, we do have to remember that these guys do require anti-tank while the light infantry. I don't believe they do. A little bit of lag. Yeah, they do not. So that's it's still good to use them and keep them on board. Because we only have so much anti-tank. We'll see what happens. Anything else? Can we raid anybody yet? Oh, they don't have any... Oh, technically we can. The early has no stuff. Zlatas Republic. Oh, we were successful last time. What if we, uh... <clears throat> came back? And they're still looking pretty weak. Look at that. 1 to 10? No, we got less modifiers. Let's see what happens. 
And these guys are at least regular. So, home away from home. Roll and land of the aircraft on a makeshift runway, giving out a big sigh of relief. He pushed the latch open and came out in the cool Russian air. Roland looked at his plane, seeing the singed and burning left wing of the plane. He cringed, then felt his legs go weak as he realized how close it was to exploding. It meant to be a regular bombing raid for the cadets. He was lucky to have even gotten out, let alone land it safely. He heard footsteps nearby and he turned to face whoever it was. In front of him, Roland saw a small group of men in uniform. It took a moment for him to realize it, but they were the German army. Good, Roland thought. He was in safe territory. Hello, said one of them in flawed German. Are you with the Nazis? I am in the... Oberge of the 34th Air Division of the Luftwaffe, sir. I require assistance for my aircraft to reach my home base. The men looked at one another in confusion before turning to him, saying, We can assist you, Herr. Hard officer. Roland smiled and stepped aside as he began crowding the plane when the actual speaker stood off to the side with Roland as he began probing it. Hard officer, it is an honor to meet a German. You must not get a lot here. Never. Are your uniforms surplus? Yes, mostly scams from what we can find. You have my sympathies. Who is the leader of the Reichskommissar? The man didn't respond and seemed confused. In front of him, the men had taken out the tools and began repairing the wing. Do you not know? Well, we don't have a Reichskommissar, sir. We have the Fuhrer. The man did a salute, raising his arm in his air as he stared into space. Wait, this isn't Moscovine? Nine, comrade. You're Russians, then? Uh, yes. But why are you helping me? It's what good Aryans do. <laughs> Happy 1963, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. It's going to be an exciting year to see what happens. We're going to scavenge for and hopefully beat up a couple uh, Untermensch. Slaughter. City of Slaughter. Very nice. And which we now must instill fear. Ever since the end of the West Russian War, the Germans have begun their terror bombing campaign to teach the lesser peoples to know their place in the hierarchy of this world. Every day when the planes pass, we look towards the sky and see not terror, but admiration. The Aryans that live beyond Russia have fulfilled their fate and through merit alone reached the apex position of the blood, amongst the blood. These bombing bombs and terror are the tools to secure the dominance in Russia following the example set by our German kin and superiors. We shall be the terror of the land and night, while they reign in the sky and day. No longer shall our inferiors find the darkness a refuge, as the brothers will ransack the countryside and aid the Aryans in their, in their quest. They shall learn the only lesson an Untermensch ought to learn, to fear, to be afraid of their superiors. Alright, let's go ahead and teach these Untermensch a lesson. The city slider, Guthrum Wagner, the Fuhrer of the Aryan Brotherhood and greatest despot of West Russia, was proud of many things. He was proud of his blood, the mighty Aryan stock that impelled him towards great and terrible deeds. He was proud of his martial spirit, his leadership, his deep knowledge of the principles of politics and war, and his tireless will to reshape the world. He had a haughty admiration, unburdened by doubt or reason for himself as a pinnacle of racial development looking out on the city, though, of Perm, from the Brotherhood's Volkshide. He felt prouder than ever before, not only for his own myriad virtues, but for everything his people had accomplished. It had a stock, brutal beauty to it. The buildings were concrete blocks, the decadent historic structures cleared away by war and demolition to make way for the needs of the race. The streets, once teeming with Bolshevist filth, were now filled with quiet, only quiet, orderly slave crews, watching, being watched carefully over by Aryan overseers. New factories appeared seemingly every day, filling the skies with smog and pumping up nothing, nothing else but the finest weapons of war for his legions. Wagner had taken this disorderly mess, this orderly mess, that was perm and beaten it viciously into shape. Now it's hundreds of thousands of inhabitants, Aryan or slave, was seemingly of a single mind, united by forest towards a single purpose, the utter annihilation of anyone who would stand in the way of the Brotherhood of Aryans, or the Aryan Brotherhood. The Reich gears up for war. Oh, very nice, rebuilt industry, very awesome. Hey, and they learned their lesson last time. Look at that. They learned their lesson as they should. Uh, let's see. You know what? Since we're pretty neutral on everything, how about for this campaign, we're going to maximize industrial equipment at every single opportunity we get. Because we're going to have a, quite a few debuffs here. We already have debuffs. But if we can get more factory output, why not? Let's maximize industrial equipment in this campaign will be the masters of equipment in the world, hopefully. But we'll see what happens. All right, is there anyone else we can beat up? I would love to go to war. Well, at least at least do well against other people. And actually, it's kind of disappointing that we didn't get to war since we don't get any more army XP. We can train, but that uses up equipment that we can't really replace that well. So, I'm going to put you on low just because I don't think we can really feel that feel that anymore. Uh, we are running out of anti-tank. I don't like that a lot. Oh, we're not even making artillery or something here? We got two on guns. That's okay, actually. Can we do that instead? There you go. Simru Golch wins Welsh, Welsh elections. I've never seen that guy win. A bright spot? Indeed. Oh, man. We're not even making anything now. Why is that? Oh, wait. Now, now we're making things? Now we're not making things. Wait, hold on. I don't understand. 
are one contribute 0.6 basic infantry rifles at cost of 0.5. Um, I don't understand. What the heck? Oh, 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 we're not really making too much then. Instilling fear of reformer raiders. Though our men are excellent in causing terror, proving to be the lesser peoples that even in the quiet and dead of the night that they are not safe. The Brotherhood and its ideals demand still more. The Brothers, mighty as they may be, are disorganized and confused with an unclear command structure and rules of seniority. We look to our silent benefactors, the Germans. With a centralized doctrine and the power of their blood, they were able to put the entirety of Russia to its knees. Following their example, we shall amend the structure of the Brotherhood's military arm. No longer shall a brother and another bicker amongst themselves as to who does what. Our senior brothers, effectively the officer corps of the Brotherhood, should be granted formal authority to command. With these reforms in place, we shall aspire to one day achieve the heights of the Germans. And we do get 10 more army XP, which is really, really important. Matai assumes control of the Gulf. Oil is the lifeblood of the Empire. Hey, six factories, not bad. Anything else up here? Nope. Not bad. So we got four military factories. I just... I, that didn't dawn on me, but yes, that's good. Another division? Okay, so maybe we should stop making these divisions. I think we're out, so... And we're going to need a replacement for this, so... Fortunately, you're in now. Intelligence agency, I'm not going to create that for now. Oh, man. It's not looking great. Almost 100 political powers, not bad, though. Not bad. Oh, industrial investments, we must well do that. At this point, I don't mind maybe getting another civilian factory. I mean, I still prefer military factories, I'll be honest. But we'll see what happens. Can only get 0.66 a day. Right, like two months away for that. How about this one? A discipline rating force. Strike at the heart. Autonomous battalions. Ooh, that's more speed. I like that. Strike at the arteries. More political power and manpower. That's not bad. Madagascar is falling apart. Clap the German Madagascar. A discipline rating force. Ooh. I don't mind that. I like. I really like that max planning. Hmm. Or autonomous battalions. Hmm. Strike at the arteries. Or this one. You get guns and political power, which is okay. It's not great. It's not bad. Autonomous battalions. I really like 10% more speed. Supply grace is better. Better out of supply. I'm thinking more max planning. Let's go with the discipline rating force. Ooh, I'm not sure if this helps us with uh, converting everything over, but we'll do a discipline rating force. From the archives of the Permheim, the officers and generals of the Brotherhood study the art of war. In the search for the perfection of the, to the Aryan ideal, they stumbled across an innovative German idea, the general staff. A body of centralized command that deliberates and calibrates the course of warfare, ensuring that everything goes to plan. It is popular amongst the higher echelons, but is infamous with the lower-ranking soldiers of the Brotherhood. However, what do the junior officers or brothers know of running the Brotherhood? We shall establish a general staff and independence appendages, ensuring that combat will always go as planned. Its reputation with the common soldiery will perhaps incense them, as this will entail the loss of their ability to raid as they see fit. We shall not let their anger get in the way, however, for the final victory demands something of all of us. No, so I'm not sure if that's going to be good or bad if we trying to get Hyperborea, so we'll see what happens. I'm not really sure that's good or bad, so in any case, I'll make sure that it'll be at least okay for us. We, we can make one more division before... Man, it doesn't take much time at all to make another division. 5% a day, gosh darn. But, yeah. I mean, a big army is cool and all, but I prefer a smaller, efficient, strong army. Alright, back to war. Well, whenever we can, of course. Ooh, more army XP. We, don't, we just don't have the anti-tank. I need more. We need more anti-tank. So that we can get at least one more infantry battalion in our normal, normal regular infantry division. So The Asuda Crisis, huh? What falls faster, a man or shares? They pay tribute again. As they should. So we're done training soldiers for now. I, I don't want to spare any more guns or stuff like that. And agricultural methods, research facilities. Let's go with. Eh, which one do we want? It's going by 0.5. Well, that's already going up a little bit. Academic base, basic literacy, base, better research speed, output. Yeah, that's not bad. Updated research. We lose political power if we actually go up to modern research. Basic mechanization. That's actually not. That's actually pretty good to do because you get more output anyway. So let's go with mechanization and then literacy. There we go. That's better. Good job, soldiers. Good job. Yeah, we don't have enough of that. That's looking okay for now. So then we'll get some basic literacy after that. Because actually, getting better agricultural stuff is probably much more important. Strike at the heart. 
All the officers of the Brotherhood's military headquarters are busy every day, ever since its establishment and inauguration. From Permheim to the frontiers of the Borg borders flows a steady stream of instruction and commands, and on its way back, it gathers intelligence and information regarding the front. With such a profound supply of data coursing through its veins, the Brotherhood's general staff has grown to be a capable, militaristic entity. Its existence and com competence necessitate another radical change to take place. We shall no longer be content with raiding the rural villages and towns, as these prove themselves to be a waste to the staff's efforts. Instead, we will set our eyes on the choices pieces Russia can offer its small cities. The risks of attacking these are high, but the rewards are vaster. Using superior planning, the inferior peoples shall stand no chance against us. Topics of the day. In a culture where weakness means death, and every member of the elite is constantly on the lookout for ways to put each other down and elevate themselves, people are prone to gossiping. Parmheim was a spiderweb of intrigue. Members of the Aryan class constantly shared choice pieces of potentially damaging information in exchange for favors and support. No one fascinated and frustrated by Parmheim. No one fascinated and frustrated Permheim's network of informants more than a figure by the name of Siegfried Schultz. Just who was this man? What brought him here? How was he climbing the ranks so quickly? A wild conspiracy theories were as natural as to air to the Aryans, each had his own theory. I'm telling you, he's a foreign agent. Abwehr or CIA or something. Why else would he come out of the blue, one would say to his fellows. Another would post. That's a crock of crap. I think he's related to the fear. It's complete nepotism. A third, Silent O'Neill, would chip in, shocking his brethren. I've met him, you know. That man's a political visionary. He'll be running this place someday, mark my words. A hurricane of attention and speculation seemed to follow Schultz everywhere he went, and only grew in magnitude as it continued, his ascendancy through the Aryan Brotherhood's power structure. Even the Fuhrer took notice. Whoever this outsider was, he certainly had charisma. Could this be something to take advantage of, or was it best to hold Schultz down before he rose too far? Every man needs to learn his place. I believe a promotion is in order. Very good. Any equipment? New. No. Alright then. 15 divisions is not bad, because... Okay, so early, it depends on what you're, who you're playing as. Eventually, you do want to have, like, quite a few divisions. They might not be great, but quite a few divisions to at least hold the, the front line. Because if halfway through, like, this region of, like, Western Russia, you got to have enough divisions to hold the line. Of course, some will have to be really good, but some of the other enemies will have a lot of divisions, especially Samara, which I really don't like. That's going to be, be a pain in the butt to kill off. Hopefully, someone else can take them out, but... Eventually, once this stage is done, especially once you get to like the four the four quadrants of Russia, like over here, so Western Russia, this part of Siberia, Siberia proper, or Central Siberia, and then Eastern Siberia, then at that point you can kind of modify things. Let's see. Oh, wait, we have we got another military factory. There's only like a forty percent chance to get a factory. We've got like three of them so far. That's nuts. Can we do? If I do this, that's actually quite a bit of artillery, actually. Now, will that give us guns every single day? Because all we need... Ooh, there goes... Ooh, the Rex Commissar at Madagascar. That should be more every single day, then. If you have two factories going at all times. 2.4? Please... Oh, come on. Why is that one going? Why is this one going in, not this one, then? This production cost is 0.5. This production cost is 2. This is cost four times as much, and yet this one isn't even being worked on. Strike at the heart. And then test our theories. Under the shadow of the German planes, we have reformed our forces to reach the heights of they attained. Now the Brotherhood looks at its men with pride, for no army of Aryans more exemplary and capable of ever tread the lands of Russian triumph. The examples of the Germans have aided us well, and the strength of the blood has carried us this far. The time is right for a test of our own power, a trial that will redeem the worth of our bonds. We look to our neighbors, to the south lay Bashkiria. With its pretensions to independence and self-determination, our kin pine for liberation from the Untermensch, and the blood wishes to heed their call to the north lay Berezniki, where wells of oil, resources, and motorized plans to wait for their use in the hands of a bravarian. Whatever we choose, we must prepare. Our brothers will clean, clean their guns. Strain and rest for failure is not an option. Absolutely. Well, that's a lot of political power, I'd say. Um, political campaign, lose stability. Nah. More manpower. We might be able to use that, actually. Get some more infrastructure for so. Strategic theorem. Good. I really like that one just because it gives you plus 10 to entrenchment. Offensive strategy. That's kind of a waste for us. Even though I really like that soft attack, hard attack, and plus supply consumption, which is really good. I'm going to grab more organization and more defense. And even five more entrenchment. We're going to be digging in quite a bit with our soldiers here. Quite a bit. Oh, we can buy infantry equipment. You know what? It probably won't happen again. And we can secure control. So let's go and try this again. And secure control because we get more stability. War planning. Hmm. You know what, we'll go with secure control without war planning. Next time we get secure control, then we'll do war planning with it. Because while I like war support, I want to focus more on stability. Alright, if they fail the order, 
acquiring stuff, then I won't use I won't go for them again. Vyatka's got stuff. Bashkiria has stuff, and the Brezniki do have stuff as well. I like I, I want to take them out, but we'll see what happens. I don't know the cooldown time between having a successful or failed raid to the next time you can actually do that again. I don't really know the timing for that. Oh, Magadan! I do need to play as Magadan as well someday. Actually, they're actually pretty high on the list. Matkovsky? Cool. Just your friendly, average, everyday fellow fascist. Kimrovo? Central Siberian. Guys, Tesla Theory is cool. Actually, does Kimrovo have a focus tree? Oh, I, yes, they do. I gotta play them someday. Oh, yeah. There's just so many Russian. So many so many good things to play here. Terra the Bashkirs. Liberate the Aryans. Ooh, that's not bad. Or strike the Berezniki. We get a little bit more equipment. Seize the resources. Even more anti tank. I like that anti tank a lot. So you get a total of 20 political power, 50 political power, 200 manpower, and 25 army XP. And then 200 anti tank and 225 motorized versus manpower and political power. And then you get some political power, manpower, army XP. I want to go with this because we get more anti tank. Strike Berzniki, the land to our north, the region called Berzniki, as a suzerainty of the false emperor that reigns in Vyatka. Its small population and rural infrastructure meant that it would have fallen underneath our attention if not for its oil metal. To gain an edge over the other powers in the region, Berzniki presents a lucrative opportunity to ease the burden of operating and running motorized divisions, as well as depriving the so-called Tsar of raw material. We must strike at once. If we decide to go after Berzniki, our officers will draw plans and assign battalions to specific areas of the border. Our attacks shall be quick and sharp, but without mercy. Once they retreat, they will leave behind their harvest of resources for the taking, as the Untermensch is only worthy of living when it benefits the Aryan. Alright. Ooh, Vyatka, no thanks. Still have 63 political power. Nice. Death of Salma Atai, Prime Minister. Well, we send our condolences, but we don't know who you are, even. Seven factories. Not bad. Three a day could be pretty good, but we do we do get... We still get that, kind of, so... It just goes away occasionally, which I don't understand why, but hey, whatever. Now, if I were to throw on another infantry here, we would have one. I'm going to go do that. Ten combat width is perfect for us right now. Nice. Very, very nice. Alright, a few days left. And go right ahead. We dream of our own Thailand. Well, maybe you're Thailand, I don't really care. 75 political power. They refuse tribute. So be it. Hopefully we can win here. Eh, it's not that big of a river, but we'll see what happens. Um, external investments. Chain our troops. We only have one loot, and hopefully no one else wants to attack us right now, but even if they do, we still have nine other divisions we can call upon, so that's not bad. I really want to do the Rite of Ascension. That looks really good. Extreme control over the non-Aryans. Oh, they're throwing in four divisions in total. That is not ideal. We're using three light... Four light... Okay, we just won! We weren't even a... We didn't even get it 100%, but okay then. Schools or research facilities? Yeah, schools are more important than research facilities. Beautiful, my brethren. Seize their resources. With the forces of Belzniki retreating into the capital city broken and scattered, the resources that inhabit the border regions are ours for the taking. The village and town guards there would be no match against a weak force, let alone against an army of Aryans, which, as our previous plans, only leaves us with a single concern left. The little rural oil f wells that dot their landscape will serve us well. We shall send our soldiers there to take whatever they have scrounged up from the bowels by the earth, by force if necessary. We will also dispatch the brothers to metal mines to loot, burn, and pillage them for everything they can provide for us. The Untimensch have sat without trouble for long enough. It is time for the Aryans to reap their harvest and leave them to rot amongst the locusts. The spoils of war. Beautiful, my friends. Beautiful. But unfortunately, I will be right back. My apologies about that, but we have vacuum tube computing finished. Let's go ahead and grab another one. Transistor computing. Now, off screen, I've already gone ahead and added on just a little bit of something to our infantry. Most notably, superior artillery to our support equipment. So very, very nice. These guys will actually have quite a bit more breakthrough and soft attack, which would be great. We can seize their resources, and actually, I'd like to throw stuff on here too. Uh, you know what? We'll throw on support artillery here as well. It's going to hurt us a little bit. That's fine, just so that we can give our soldiers a little bit more oomph, especially because they're just light infantry, which is not great. It's okay, but towards new pastures, the Brotherhood has triumphed. Fate alone has affirmed its ideals. It has succeeded in the trial that it had set 
for itself, with Untermensch defeated and their hosts shattered and dissipated to the winds. The Brotherhood now stands on its feet, not merely admiring the bombers as they pass by, but reaching out, imagining itself on a flight with their kin. The day will come, even if it is far away, for the blood does not lie. For now, however, the Brotherhood looks past its borders and its immediate surroundings. Russia is vast, and in its size lay opportunities. We shall strike out, carving a bloody path through it, stealing and looting whatever we can get our hands on. The road to attaining equal merit to our German brothers is long, and the Untermensch will assail us every step of the way. However, like the Germans, we will triumph against the odds. Oh, you bet we will. You absolutely bet we will. And also, I did begin to start to buy some anti-tank from Zataust. Hopefully it goes through, and we have no issues, because I would not want to come over here and raise them down. But we'll see what happens. Hey, you never know. Scavenging for loot as well. Seven factories. Now, we're doing industrial investments. Now, it'll be interesting to see. Can we get a fourth military factory? Ooh, Amur and Transbaikal Principality, huh? All right, then. Well, good luck with that. Very much good luck. Two days left. Uh, towards new pastures. And the next research, we did get transistor computing and prepared readout systems. Oh, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. The Taust order failed. Only you can stop the black market. Untrustworthy people. Pathetic. I really don't want to invest in these guys again. It's only 10 political power, which is not bad for us right now, but... Mm, mm. It looks like the Untermensch failed to deliver their goods. For shame. And we've won loot. Come on, someone. Try to attack us. Come try to steal our loot. See what would happen. Regardless. Cleansing Russia. We are the Aryan Brotherhood, strong, committed, and above all, pure. For a long time, we've allowed our nation to be trampled upon no longer. It is time for us to raise or rise to the occasion and forge ourselves, a nation of pure, strong, independent people, to secure a position amongst the most honored Aryans there are. Prepare the right of ascension. Prepare our brave Aryan soldiers. We must begin our march on Russia and demonstrate to the warlords and Soviets alike the superiority of our blood and our ways. It is time that we cleanse our nation by force if necessary to show our strength and bring it kicking and screaming into the Aryan century. I might be getting into this too much. Also, other comments and... Has the first episode of this campaign been demonetized by the time I am recording this? No, it has not yet been. But there's always a chance it will be later on. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't get demonetized, but whatever. Uh, let's see, other comments. Pl go back and play Heydrich's Germany. Heydrich. Heydrich. Yes, I want to play as Heydrich's Germany. I will get there. I don't plan on playing a Russian unifier after this campaign. So, we'll see what happens. But definitely, Heydrich is hot, very high on the list for me right now. But I don't think it's the highest. I'll just put it like that. I've, I've, there's so many nations here in TNO. There's just, I don't have enough time to play every single nation and make videos over it and stuff like that. So, how many times do we need to teach you this, old man? And by old man, I'm pretty much referring to this guy. Man, getting that land auction done and putting artillery on our soldiers, so good, just so good. Equipment, yes, please. Spores of war. Look at that. More stability. More war support. More rifles. Yes. Let's take a look. Okay, so that's gonna be bug. We got a fourth. I think it was a fourth military factory there, or third, fourth, third, fourth military factory. I mean, okay, why not? Yeah, why not? At this point, we got enough guns compared to artillery. We definitely have to make artillery because it takes longer to make. Iberia announces the creation of the Iberian Council, eh? Well, good good for you guys. Political campaigns, no. I mean, if we, if we really wanted to tank our stability, so be it, whatever. But I'm not about that right now. That is fun. Now, I wonder when we get to choose our new focus. Because right now, we're, we're getting a lot of this stuff. All right, we can't go to war with anyone down here, can we? No. Oh, Yanis Mendrix. Euro League. I gotta play as Euro League sometime. You guys have no focus tree, but Niki has no focus tree, but they are for syncretism on guns and giving. Mikhail Voronin was a powerful figure to many. Having served along the front lines against the Germans, he may have not been an officer back then, but by God in heaven, did it allow for some heavy qualifications to be given to him in the election for leadership in a small village. Plus, being a father helped out a lot in being able to know what it meant to do some good things for a community. However, it almost felt like as if none of that mattered in these next few moments, or all of it mattered. Voronin made sure as heck sure as heck didn't know anymore as a caravan pulled into the snowy thicket. Out of the middle car, except a certain Mr. Lagunov had been tasked with meeting with 
the one he was meant to coordinate an arms deal with. However, with the potential death on the horizon thanks to his lord's attacks against the people of Zataos, Mikhail was left unsure. So, Mr. Lagonov, I know that sales are off the table for today. However, with Mayor Consul Dragonov's expertise and wisdom, perhaps there is a chance that we can come to an agreement. Mikhail said, of course, his bright smile could do wonders for many. However, no level of falsified pleasantries could mask the anxiety riddling Mikhail's spine. Your people will get their guns, don't worry. The Mayor Consul approved of further transactions for the near future with your people. We shall meet again in this same spot bi-weekly. You'll get guns, you'll pay us. Got it? Mikhail, suffering the effects of a shock, nervousness, and dread, was amazed by the success of the operation. Absolutely, sir. Whatever you need done, we can prove by... But before Mikhail Voronin could finish what he had to say, the gun dealer was already turned around and headed back to his caravan. As the fierce engines blitz against the Russian snow. All is forgiven, I suppose, and Daddy Hitler's gone. A day of remembrance for all. Hmm... More infrastructure, why not? Actually, how is infrastructure here since we've been doing it quite a bit? Six, seven, hey, not bad. We got more oil, too. Awesome. Not like we can really use it too much, but since Daddy Adolf is gone, that means the Luftwaffe terror bombings should be ending soon, and we might be able to build stuff, get some cap, get some more growth, get some more consumer goods factories. At least hopefully. A little bit of lag. Happy October 27th, though. It's still only 1963. Oh, look at that. It's lagging super hard right now because of German Civil War. Very cool. So it begins. So I've not seen the Civil War yet. So Heydrich, oh my goodness, you are so small. Oh, so handsome. But anyways, Bormann, Mr. Balding. Speer, you are looking... Getting, looking real old and... Oh, Heydrich is still over there, technically. And, oh my goodness, yeah. I'm not sure how you can really win as Heydrich. I, I did it before, but, like, this entire side just gets killed off. Because there's no way they can get supplies over there, which really sucks. Franco Burgundian War, a shadow looms over France. And of course, there's Germania. Yeah, even if you just have to build so many forts here and like all the factories you can in this, like, basically Alsace Lorraine. Alsace Lothringen, Moselle, Luxembourg. That's all you got. And we're going to scavenge for more loot. Right of Ascension. It was secure control. I did say we do it like this. And we're planning for more. Oh, actually, we have more worse for than anything else. The bombing stopped for a long time. Life in a very large portion of Russia has been defined by the German terror bombing campaign. An entire generation of Russians have grown up in blasted ruins, always watching the skies, ready to run to cover the moment the dark figures of the bombers themselves are spotted. An entire generation of government, whatever the ideology, has struggled with establishing infrastructure or an industrial base of any kind, and what little is built is often promptly destroyed. But not anymore. Millions of Russians have not had not to make had to make blah, 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 had have not had to make desperate runs to safety for days. Repairs to civilian and military infrastructure have progressed and not been destroyed in turn. New construction still stands. The realization is done. The bombers have stopped. To those with access to information from the outside, it is believed that the civil chaos now engulfing the hated Reich and its colonial extensions in the Reichskommissariats have rendered it impossible for their aerial efforts to continue. To those without it, it is believed by many to be a gift from God. Even as ordinary Russians celebrate with something approaching delirium, however, others speak of dark clouds on the horizon. The many Russian statelets, no longer suffering perilous at the bombs of the Germans, are now free to look outwards. Only time will tell how they choose to proceed. Clear skies, dark clouds, here we go. Still knocked. For the past week or so, the German bombers are nowhere to be seen. Our Aryan brethren have deserted the skies, presumably to concentrate on their own affairs. The situation in Germany must be dire enough that the Führer has judged it appropriate to withdraw from the skies of Russia and let the Untermensch bloom again. Our nights and days are now silent without a crash of shrapnel or the screams of alarms. As the only Aryan enclave in Russia, we cannot let this situation go out of hand. As the Untermensch themselves prepare to reclaim Russia for their ends. So must the Brotherhood grow and challenge them. In the absence of the fear of the Germans bring, we must step up to restore order and stem the tide of the Untermensch that surrounds us. We shall stand and fight like never before, for we have been, never been, truly alone with the Germans in the skies. Oh boy. And that should get done pretty quickly. Hans Spider assumes control of Germania. Oh, Spider. Now or never, our chance of Bashkiria plowshares into swords. Dark skies of Peramheim. Uh, this stuff seems okay. Guns for every hand. That seems okay. Full speed ahead, that's not bad, that's not great. Suffer what they must, the slaves lot. Brothers, solidify control. Stats report, intensify the raids. Take from the unworthy. The hooked cross advances. I want to go down here. Now or never. For the past weeks and days, the bombers that lurk over the Russian skies have disappeared. The Fjord, far away in the heartlands of Germany, has recalled them for its purposes. Rumors of a civil war travel further east, carried by fearful whispers of prisoners and traitors alike, the Untermensch. And the absence of our benevolent Aryan overlords will no doubt stand our presence no, for longer. For their holes in the ground, they will crawl out and ready to challenge Aryan rule over these lands again. 
It's now or never. Before enemies can arise against us, we must stand. The time for frivolous raids and mindless carnage is fading fast and sure. Survival is no longer enough for the Brotherhood. Our Brotherhood must now stand above the tide of the Untermensch and purify Russia. It must expand and subjugate. If it does not, it will perish. And Himmler is, has appeared. I want to raid again. I really want to raid. Let me raid, please. Spia is pretty small. Bowman starts with Vienna, which is kind of nice. Or Vienna, I should say. He actually starts out pretty thick. I like how thick he is. Well, not Bormann himself, but his country. He has Dresden, Leipzig, Erfurt. He has all of Bavaria and München. And then all of what was used to be Österreich. That's actually a really, really, really strong position there. Wow. Of course, Goring's not bad, but his capital is in Breslau, and that's okay. I wouldn't say that's too bad, but... Yeah, i definitely say Bormann is probably the strongest here. Even though they do kind of have the Rhine in Speer's land, but... Eh. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Archesh and Bashkiria. To the south of Paramheim, lay the land of Bashkiria, a natural state proclaimed in the aftermath of the West Russian War. Though we had opportunity to play with our prey before the bombing stopped, now it is no longer a game. The Brotherhood needs to expand. Bashkiria seems to be a prime estate for such endeavors. Their factories can churn out guns for the Brotherhood's armies, and their people can provide the necessary labor to ensure a steady, uninterrupted supply of weaponry. However... Before moving into Bashkiria proper, the Brotherhood will prepare itself. We will redirect our raids against them, wounding them with a thousand cuts before the time comes to finish them off. At the same time, our new secret police, the Gestapo, will infiltrate the territories of Bashkiria on the lookout for secrets and weaknesses. Before we are through with them, they will break, and they will beg for the end to come soon. But will it? Maybe. Maybe not. The Serbs rise up, and Oslan is controlled by a whole host of different people. Actually, Nova Polska. How are you doing? Not great. Polish rule, nation of survivors, as well as Marian Spyshashkai's bizarre dictatorship. And South Africa's falling apart as well. Gotta love it. There's something happening over here. Oh. And the Rex Commissariat Novigan, South African War, the Dominoes Shall Stop, our chance in Bashkiria. Of course, from our Gestapo. Our Gestapo, short for. Geheimstaatspolize has been an institution for great use to the Brotherhood. Not all that crave to fight us wish to do so in broad daylight, nor do we watch or want to attack without preparation or prior intelligence, making their way from the shadows of Permheim to the villages and small towns of Bashkiria, spinning a web of deceit and misinformation here, there, as well as gathering information for an eventual attack. Together with this new information, the ranks of the Brotherhood's armies must now account for information gleaned by them to be more efficient. The winter mentioned in Bashkiria, although weak compared to the Aryans, have an advantage over the Brotherhood in numbers. The flow of new knowledge that will ensure the armies that the armies of the Brotherhood can remain undefeated in battle. For the blood demands of the final victory is paid at any cost. And actually, you know what? Do we even build anything right now? We actually can! I was tempted to actually do this instead. Can we do that? Alright, well, we can. Is that a cool name? The name we just sucked for? Oh, the Red Star United Army. Oh, yeah. Muscovine is not looking too good right now. Hmm. Barash's shot cell here, though. Oh, Von Denbach. Oh, boy. Very cool. I want to raid... Oh, Vyatka, do you guys have anything? No. Oh, hello. Hello, Belzniki. Report from the Gestapo. Contacts amongst the Russians. The Republic of Bashkiria, despite its name, is a hastily cobbled together nation held together by a fragile alliance of Russians and Bashkirs, intertwined by the mutual need for safety and defense. A seemingly liberal state that upholds the rights of minorities, it has come to balance itself between the many interests of its ethnic constituents. Though Russians and Bashkirs are untermensch, the Brotherhood has found the blood to be on the side of the former. Before any attack on Bashkiria can it itself can occur, we need to widen the cracks that emerge between them. Though not many will join the Brotherhood willingly, there are Russians from whom we can extract loyalty against the Bashkir state. These will spread ethnic unrest amongst the Russians and Bashkirts, fracturing the political landscape of the Republic, divided and weakened. They will not be in any state to retaliate against the Brotherhood, like lambs to the slaughter. And we will begin an attack as soon as our soldiers are organized and ready. 37 army XP is not bad. What's our supply like right now? We need more artillery, of course. We have enough infantry equipment that I think we'll be okay with expanding the amount of divisions we have here. I'd like to get at least one more, but contacts amongst the Russians, pretty nice. 
exploit the Krakis. Oh, start the border war between us and them. Let's wait to do that one. Suffer what they must. The warriors of Slavic incompetence prove their value or lack thereof every day. In the prison camps that stretch miles and miles throughout the countryside of our new living space. It was their cowardice and the characteristics of the weaker race that brought them crawling with the white flag to our soldiers. They were lucky we didn't shoot them then, for a bullet is barely what their pitiful lives are worth now that they rot in tent cities, taking up valuable resources and food, water, and men. While we also put many to a death, or deserve death, for minor acts such as insurrection and even more by labor, the constant stream of prisoners that we capture in our war of Aryan liberation grows by the day. Orders for summary executions have been sent to the camps, and quotes are, quotas are increased. We only hope their numbers may dwindle down. They dwindle now. They must suffer for that as a natural position of a slave. There can be no redemption. Let us begin. Ooh, political investments. Why not? Ah, uh, Belsniki. Do, do, do you have any soldiers? They pay tribute, which I like. Kazenbeck. Not looking good. Not looking good for you guys. They have... Okay, they must have been raided by other people to the point where they have no one left. Agricultural, yeah, actually, are we doing both agricultural and new worker stuff? So we have power tools, which is doing great. Outdated research facilities, we're doing basic literacy, we're doing mechanization. Mechanization is still better than literacy, but okay. Workers, actually, how's industrial expertise going? It's still, it's barely going up. Expertise is just, it's just okay. It's just not that great. I prefer agriculture over that stuff, so. Workers, workers are replaceable. Agriculture, crops, not always so much so. Oh, 20 more organization. That is so nice. More recruitable population factor? Yes, please. And it's almost 1964. And I know this is a very long second episode, but it is a necessary good. Not an evil, but a necessary good. Suffer what they must. Exploit the cracks. With divisions sown and the weaknesses made known, the Republic of Bashkiria, for all their numerical advantages against us, now lay at the mercy of the Brotherhood. Bickering plagued their legislatures and unrest formants in the smallest villages, paralyzing their political capabilities. All the while, the Gestapo is doing their work in the shadows, feeding the Brotherhood with information regarding the ba Republic's weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Bashkiria never has been a mere more prime target for the Brotherhood. It is time for the Brotherhood to pounce on its chosen prey. For the first time since the end of the bombings, the armies of the Brotherhood will not march in the name of looting or raiding alone, but war. We will destroy them and claim the prizes that lay within their lands for ourselves. The Brotherhood shall not doubt itself at this crucial hour, or this critical hour. We shall crush the Untermensch and throw them under our feet. The slaves lot. The crack of a rifle shook Yeltsin's mind from daydreaming. Still half asleep, he wondered if it had torn through him. His hands bloody, raw from the months of hard labor, dyed the spade red, and found himself thinking nothing of the dirt he shoveled over the cold, expressionless body beneath him. What's the difference between us, he let his mind ponder. In moments of weakness, he almost found himself envy those he piled high into ditches four feet across, five feet deep. At least he gets some rest. Not a year before, he would have been shocked to hear he would spend much of his days emptying and refilling holes, much less these ones. A simple existence in a village not far from Ufa. He was one of the few born after the war. He had watched his father go off and not come back in the second one, and the cries of his mother's stayed with him for ever since. Six, five, no, four months ago, which felt like a lifetime in this heck. An old hunting shotgun was thrust into his hands and his young mind thrown into an open field. The Brotherhood, as they call themselves in, in a mix of broken Russian and German, came with flamethrowers and bayonets without firing a shot. Yeltsin ran. Yeltsin the he ran and he ran, but he wasn't fast enough. A bullet caught him in the shoulder and his body thrown onto a truck bound God knows where. But now, with every thrust of his shovel, his body tweaks, or his body ages weeks. They toil from the dawn till dusk, many slipping feet beneath the frozen earth. The one constant is the work and the bullets. If there's only one way out, he toyed with the idea in his mind. Yelisi stopped for a moment. In that moment, intrigued by the thought of leaving, he dropped a shovel. Despite the shouts and the stairs, he was already gone. Seconds later, he dropped too. Sleep now, Yelisi. The rest of you never got in life. The rest you never got in life. Stability, we lose some manpower, so be it. Stability is more important. And, yeah, is that a cool name? Do you want? Do you think we should change our name? Should we actually change it to <clears throat> the Gestapo? Let me know in the comments below. We need a lot of factories to do all that stuff, and we can't, but we do eventually get a spy, which will help out maybe in the upcoming war against these guys. Ever onwards. While the cruel degenerate Slavs around us only wish to crawl out and mark the grotesque conditions their race is so accustomed to, it is us Aryans who strive to see a future where the higher races of this fractured continent rule over a subservient lower class of Slavic Untermensch. This future, while inevitable, 
will not happen without our iron will, the catalyst for its creation. Under the strong and enlightened guidance of a pure blooded ruler, Guthrum Wagner, the Aryan race will finally bring order to the, to ju to the jungle of chaos that is Rosland. The Slavs have proved time and time again their inability to manage themselves in a civilized manner. This further proved by the Bolshevism and weak-minded nationalism that plagues the disunited states today. Our masterful race of Aryans must prove our supremacy through our conquest and domination of these inferior peoples. Oh, oh, oh there's a border war, yeah. I forgot about that. The Croatian winter, they shall be judged by history. The victory for the Brotherhood. The glorious city of Permheim and its Aryan inhabitants were engulfed in joy and celebration as our brave warriors returned home from battle from the Bashkir Welps. Full of stories of glory and plunder, the Bashkirs, as expected, fell under their furious onslaught, and they turned tail like the cowards they were and slunk back into their caves. A glorious battle was cause for celebration enough, but more than this, we are now in position of, of a sliver of their land, as it should be. As the fear has proclaimed, once our mission is done, all of the future Reich is to become a living space for the Brotherhood. Another victory for the Aryan. And can we core that piece of territory? Oh, can we actually raid against them? Oh, we still have successful raids, though. Alright, let's take a look. Wagner! You're not supposed to personally lead them in the battle, you're supposed to, uh, be the field marshal. Just, can we core this? I, I, I want to core this, please. Oh, integrate? Oh, uh, why are we hoving over there? What the heck? Well, that's not cool if we can't core. Seriously, why can't we core stuff? Well, let's occupy territories, let's see. Local police force. I don't like local police force. That's cool and all, but I don't want to hurt our compliance, and we want we want a lot of compliance. Ooh, actually, you know, what? let's duplicate this. Uh, no, we'll duplicate this one. Uh, duplicate. Gar, two gar, gar er, gar double r, save. Ooh, we have no military police. That's fine. They have their uses. The Fiorial speech, and then we should do one more focus and call it a long episode. Transcription of official brotherhood speech delivered by Guthrum Wagner. Men of the Brotherhood, we, we may we begin this speech with respect to the great Adolf Gitler and the book Mein Kampf, to a book which we owe our redemption. Hail Gitler! In our crusade to rid of these rightfully Aryan lands of the Slavic filthy inhabitant, we find that the legions of Aryans of our Brotherhood have found great success. On all fronts, we find the inferior races dispersed as they failed to put a dent into our strong forces. This only furthers the evidence of Aryan supremacy and the rightful place of a Slav a subserviency. But we cannot be content with these successes. For every Slav we kill, there are a hundred more who march to stamp out Aryan civilization, the pinnacle of the world. I assure you you comrades that we must be ever diligent in our efforts and not forget the purposes of our legions. The end of the Slavic barbarians and their relegation to our slaves, the prophet of our time, Guthrum Wagner. And we shall conclude with more prisoners for the right. We receive more and more requests from high-ranking Brotherhood officers for an interesting resource. It is not loot, but trof not trophies, but captured live Slavs and Bashkirs. The important word being live or live. For these people are to be the most humble offering from our Aryan Brotherhood to be put through the rite of ascension. When doing one's duty to the Brotherhood, there is nothing more important than the strongest dedication one can offer. We demand nothing less. Nocturnal expeditions to occupied villages must be returned the needed, physically able. Prisoners to be brought back to Permheim to fulfill the needs of our officers. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll probably take out Bashkiria and maybe a few others. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.